So this one's scheduled for 12 three minute rounds then. Henry Wharton unbeaten in 13 contests now. One draw against Melbourne's Rod Carr. Former holder of this title. So round one then, and Henry Wharton won the vacant Commonwealth Super Midweight title with that 12 round points win over Rod Carr. Hopes to go one better here. This is Wharton's second defence. He defended against Lou Gent from Streatham, had Gent on the floor three times in that contest, and came away with the draw. Both men wearing black trunks with gold piping, although Wharton with his back to us now. Very compact, good puncher. Rod Carr looks a lot older than his 24 years. Been a pro now since 87. Wharton turned pro two years later in 89. And for the record, Wharton, 13 wins, one draw in 14 outings. And nine of those wins have come via the short route. And in his career so far, he has scored 18 knockdowns. So there's a testament to his punching ability. Caught, uh, sorry, Wharton in the longer trunks, the dark ones. But he's back to us. Good stiff jab there from Rod Carr. Rod Carr, 12 wins, 3 losses, 9 inside the distance and 1 draw in 16. And Henry Wharton, of course, very, very popular in this area. Lives in York. Not too far from Leeds. And a huge crowd turned out here at the Leeds Town Hall to see Wharton making this defence. Last time we saw him on yours, on yours thought was all too brief. He knocked out Kenny Schaefer in the first round. And the crowd start to chant Henry. And this man has a hammer in that left hook of his. I've been a bit suspect about his stamina in the past. But he's had to go the full 12 rounds a couple of times now. And 10 rounds once. That was against a tough guy. Nicky Walker, the American. Rob Carr really fancies his chances to turn away that loss last time out. And rather fortunate, I think, to have got this opportunity. Plenty of men champing at the bit for a chance to win a, a title. In fact, Rod Carr held this championship back in 89. He beat uh, Ray Quay from Ghana in four rounds. Oh, that's the bell to end the first. And really not too much in that opening round. I'll go evens on that, in fact. Rod Carr, in fact, lost his Commonwealth Championship in the very first defence against Luca Faro. Was stopped in five rounds. Luca Faro, also an Australian. That was a couple of years ago. Here's a bit of replay from the opener. Well, we're not going to see too much. Round two then. Henry Wharton from York in the longer black trunks with the gold piping against Rod Carr from Melbourne, Australia trying to regain his old title. And this Commonwealth Championship formerly known as the British Empire Championship Of course, the British Empire now has shrunk quite remarkably since those days. And Dave Paris, the referee, is the sole arbiter here. He will score every round. There's no judges appointed. All Commonwealth and British title fights in Britain are scored by the referee alone. Of course, European and World Championships 
are scored by officials appointed by the EBU or the world governing body, depending on the uh, auspices it is. Wharton there trying to get that left hook through to Carr's body, gets instead through with the right to the head. Carr comes back, stiff jab. Carr not doing too badly so far in this second round, but took a couple of digging left hooks to the body there. And uh, Henry Wharton's had some trouble with his hands. In fact, he broke his left hand when he fought Juan Elizondo in Dewsbury. Although he beat Elizondo in three rounds. Going forward here in the second round, getting through some long punches, but once again, Wharton chops him down short. Good left hook to the head there from Henry. Carr, though, undeterred, still tries to plough forward. Put there from Carr. Rather odd style, Rod Carr. Bit of a throwback. Good uppercut there from Carr. Jerks Wharton's head back. And Carr possibly has got his nose in front in the second round as the bell ends it. I think he has anyway. I'm going to give that round to Rod Carr. Got through with plenty of good left hands and kept pressing forward, although he got bashed a couple of times to the body, notably, by that Wharton left hook. I remember at Wembley, Wharton beating Dino Stewart from the States on points over eight rounds. Cracking fight. Had uh, Stewart on the floor. And it's a good job he did. He won that one by half a point. Also had another good win against Frank Minton, a journeyman, also from the States. This round three of a scheduled 12 left hook there from Carr. Taking a note out of the Henry Wharton left hook handbook. Ooh, and again, Wharton shows him how to throw them properly. Well, Henry Wharton now looking to try and get rid of Rod Carr, but Carr comes steaming back. Good punches. This is the 12 stone Commonwealth Championship, the super middleweight division. For the record, Henry Wharton scaled in exactly on the 12 stone limit. There's a chance he may even grow into a full line heavyweight, although he hasn't really got the height. But a very stocky, strong man. Henry Wharton very sensibly not trying anything too risky. This is the third. Well, referee Dave Paris there warning Rod Carr not to lean in with his head. Referee Dave Paris himself, a former boxer. Claims he was a cruiserweight, but I don't know how he made 13 and a half stone personally. And I am old enough to remember seeing him fight. Still trying to get over it. Ooh, bigness there. Oh, Wharton pecking away with both hands in this third round. Oh, short left hook from Henry Wharton. And again. Oh, doesn't want to stick his chin out and drop his hands like that. Carr, not a spectacular, but a, certainly a solid hitter. 
He's top nine opponents in his 16 contests. 12 wins, only had to go the distance three times, and one of them was against Henry Wharton for the vacant title. Well, Henry Wharton doing the right thing here, though, took a good stiff jab there again from Carr. Wharton moving side to side. Bell ends round three. We'll have a short break. You. Third round, quite convincingly, to make it all square on my card going into the fourth. Rod Carr, a former Oriental, Orient and Pacific Boxing Federation champion, won it in his sixth contest. Beat John Bogolin on a third round knockout. That was way back four years ago in 88. And I don't like the way Rod Carr holds his right hand. He holds it rather close to the left-hand side of his face, really making an open target for that Henry Wharton left hook. And he looks to have been badly advised, style-wise, for the holding there from Wharton. You'd expect Rod Carr to hold that right glove nice and tight, by the side of his chin, at the right-hand side, in fact, rather than the left. Henry Ward, the former ABA finalist. Oh, Carr getting through with a couple of thumping rights there, but Wharton waxing back downstairs, a clash of heads there. And Ruffin Day Crash once again ticking off Carr. He's a tall man and he's looking to lean down here and that's causing problems. Oh, Carr there going forward, loading up with the jab. Oh, nice right uppercut there from Rod Carr. That one hurt. Bit of a shocker there for Wharton. Comes back though. And this one may just ebb and flow. As so far. Oh, Carr took that left hook on his elbow. The problem with Rod Carr is he doesn't want to keep his head up because he's inviting Henry Wharton's left hooks. But it is causing a problem. Oh, and again, a leading uppercut there from Carr. Wharton looks to his corner. Oh, Carr not having... Too bad around here in the fourth, although once again Henry Wharton blazes back at him. And Rod Carr doesn't throw too many right hands straight. And there's the end of the fourth, and I think Rod Carr has probably just nicked that one. He's putting one up on my card with four rounds gone. Lovely leading left uppercut there from Carr. Oh, and there's the clash of heads that uh, Henry complained about, quite rightly too. Into the fifth then. Henry Wharton on the left, with his name emblazoned on the waistband of his longer trunks. Good right there from Carr. Oh, and again, Carr stiffs into the left hand. Well, Henry Wharton looking a bit disorganised here in the fifth round. Rod Carr being very persistent, really wants to get back this championship. Lost it in his first defence, failed to regain it against Henry Wharton last time. That, in fact, the last time that Rod Carr boxed. It was back in June of last year. But all together, a different proposition here tonight. Naturally, Henry Wharton would have fancied the return. 
having beaten him fairly convincingly on points over the 12 round distance last time they met now Wharton now preferring to pick his punches but Carr still working steadily well a little cluster of shots there from Wharton Carter just sticks to the job in hand Nothing glamorous or dramatic or flamboyant from him. A solid workman. And they're told not to hold. Rather surprised that uh, Rod Carr is using that right hand sparingly. He needs to learn to throw a good straight right to make the world a difference to him. It's a big looping punch, really nothing too educated about that right. Nothing wrong with his long left hand, though. Good jabs again there from Carr. He won a nice right over the top there from Rod Carr. But once again, it wasn't straight, but it still landed. Henry Wharton suddenly bursts into life after having a reasonably quiet round in this round five. And how referee Dave Parrish sees this. I've got Rod Carr, one up going into this fifth, and he looks like he might have just done enough to take round five too. Once again tells Carr to keep his head up. That ends it. Well, I think Rod Carr has just done enough to take the fifth. So after a pretty even opening round, I've given Rod Carr two, four and five, with Henry Wharton taking the third, which means I've got Henry Wharton two rounds behind. And we've got round six coming up. And the organ in this Leeds Town Hall, reminiscent of the one, although smaller, in the Royal Albert Hall. So round six then of a scheduled 12. Rod Carr on my card, the challenger, two ahead. Henry Wharton may just have been taking a breather in that fifth round. I think he's paid for it by losing the round. Although he did get through with some pretty eye-catching bursts of punches. The problem is Rod Carr will start to grow in confidence. Nothing breeds success like success. Rod Carr nicked above the right eye, above the right eyebrow in fact. A bit swollen the two about uh, on that right hand side of his face and a bit discoloured. But Henry Wolf is not getting things his own way here so far. It's a very determined effort from the Australian. Nice left hook there again from Wharton. That's his pet punch. Carr still nags away, good left right there for Rod Carr. Always found it a bit of a shame that the Commonwealth Championship Committee don't award a championship belt for their titles. Instead, the recipients get a cup. Rather smacks of the old amateur days. Once again, Rod Carr having some pretty decent moments here in round six. He's being forced to think every second of the way. I'm just wondering if Henry Wharton may have just run out of ideas. One a slightly low there from Carr on the belt. There's no doubt about it, but when Henry Wharton hits you, you stay hit so far. He's failed to connect with that stunning punch against Rod Carr. He's heard him a couple of times, but not the way we're used to seeing him. Unbeaten, Henry Wharton in 14 contests, 
One draw. Rod Carr, a winner of 12 of his 16. Also one draw. Nice left hook there from Walton, doubles it up. Well, there's the bell to end round six, and I think a pretty level round there. But I've still got Henry Wharton, two rounds adrift, with six to go. Bit of replay here, left hook there from Carr. And that's long, straight, left hand. I hate to call them a jab, I know it's almost synonymous now with left hand working boxing, but... Uh, Men have been known to have been knocked out by a good straight left. Now Rod Carr is cut on his left eyebrow. So he's showing the marks of battle in this match. Halfway stage then. Rod Carr facing us, the challenger for Henry Wharton's Commonwealth Super Middleweight Championship. This is Henry Wharton's second defence. And he's going to have to start using a bit of imagination here. So I've got him two rounds of drift going into the seventh. Wharton, of course, may just be conserving a bit of energy for the later rounds. I did mention that I've uh, had a few doubts about his stamina over the long route. And also, it's very difficult to try and keep your concentration in a long fight. The bigger man of the two, still nagging away. Although Henry Wharton holding his own so far in this seventh round. Although he does look a bit arm weary. Looking a bit void of ideas here. Once again, looks to his corner. Oh, good left hook again from Carr. Follows up with a straight left. Rod Carr is not an easy man to beat. Again, they both go at it. Wharton there just springs into life. Well, he's got to look a bit more lively than this. So far, there's not too much in. Round seven. Once again, Carr gets told to keep his head up. Wharton there, just switched for a second. Finishes the round with a couple of left hooks to the body. Good shots. Once again, though, a pretty level round, I think. Still got Henry Wharton. Two rounds of drift. Five to go. They both swap punches pretty levelly there, I think. Round eight then, goodwill towards men, yep, not in this ring though, although this is not generally a spiteful sport, normally boxers the most sporting of men. 
So Henry Wharton then two rounds adrift on my card, going into this eighth round. And he needs some success quite badly, I think, just to boost his confidence. Carl's the man boxing with an air of confidence about him. maintain this pressure unusual to see Henry Wharton backed up normally his opponents of course very fearful of that left hook of Henry Wharton and don't really want to walk on to it but Rod Carr well he's not taking the slightest bit of notice cut on both eyes now Carr once again though that uh, straight left jerks Wharton's head back before Wharton comes back with good left hooks oh and again a nice shot there from Henry Wharton this is the eighth oh look at that lovely stiff left hand from Henry Wharton I said I've seen men knocked out or knocked over with the straight left and that's what Wharton's done possibly oh look at that nasty cut there on Rod Carr's left eye close to the nose Carr under pressure now in this eighth round. Wharton looking for a finish. Oh, look at these good punches. Referee Dave Parrish has stopped it. Carr complains, but Henry Wharton retains his Commonwealth Super Middleweight Championship in great style here. An eighth round stoppage came from behind to do it, I think. Rod Carr, his face spurting blood. Not at all happy with that. But uh, Henry Wharton had his measure there in round eight, had him on the floor, followed up with a wicked burst of punches. And in this game, you don't need to take more than you have to. Here we go again. That straight left hand. Boom, there you are. That's all it was, a straight left. Smack on the chin. Down he went. Wharton smiled. So... Henry Wharton then in his second defence of this title. I just wonder if Rod Carr will get another opportunity. This is his fourth chance, in fact his fourth British Commonwealth title fight. He's only won one of the previous three. Nasty cut. Henry Wharton proclaimed the winner and still champion here a very very enthusiastic audience at Leeds Town Hall excellent win for Henry Wharton Bye.